Hello everyone, today I'll be narrating three new creepy posts that I found off of the Let's Not Meet subreddit. Liking this video and subscribing to my channel helps me a lot. After you've heard these stories, let me know what you think of them in the comments below. But without further ado, let's dive straight into their experiences. These are their stories. When I was like 13 years old, probably close to 12 years ago, I went trick-or-treating with some friends from school. We were the type to bring pillowcases and get as much as we could, then weigh at the end of the night. We've been all over the neighborhood. We lived in a suburban area, but we were quick. We were able to get most of the houses before lights started turning off, and we all had a hefty turnout of candy. Trick-or-treating was starting to calm down by this point. The time must have been around 9.30 or 10 maybe. There was this one house with the lights off, but we still walked up anyway because they were a couple couple cars parked outside. We rang the doorbell and nothing, so we rang a few times, still nothing. I'm not defending what we did at all, we were seriously stupid kids back then. One of us starts banging on the door and talking bad like, we're gonna egg your house and so on. Right after that, this man jumps out of the door and basically slams it open. We all jump back startled, it was pitch black inside his house. Where were the other people? There were two cars right in front of his house. He had to be late 20s or early 30s with a scruffy beard, wearing a white beater and black zip up hoodie and had this look of total rage in his eyes. He comes out with this huge dog on a leash that starts barking, growling, and showing his teeth in our face. I couldn't really make it out at the time, but it appeared as though he had a knife in his other hand as well. We're terrified because we didn't expect this. He just busts out the front door and starts chasing us down and we start sprinting away in total fear. He's screaming things like, I'm gonna kill you, and you shouldn't have screwed with me, or better hope my dog doesn't catch you, or get back over here. He ran after us for probably 10-ish minutes. The whole time he was just frantically waving his arm with a knife, shouting mostly incoherently with his dog by his side on that leash. It was horrifying. We got away thankfully, somehow managed to lose him after running for a while, but I can't imagine what would have happened if we stayed there for any longer. I'd probably be chow for his dog, but thankfully we were all pretty healthy kids so we could outrun him. I'm honestly surprised that nobody else was really around to see this maniac chasing us in the middle of the streets. I knew it was later at night, but still. We had to beeline back to my place looking over our shoulders the whole time because we didn't notice when we lost him and we didn't see him walk back towards his house. He was just gone after we turned a few corners. Now, I understand it would be frustrating for some kids to be at your door being annoying like that, but what gets me is that the reaction from this guy didn't really seem appropriate. I would have just opened the door and told the kids to screw off or threatened to call the cops or something like that. We went back to my parents' house and played Smash Bros on the Wii all night and ate a bunch of candy. We managed to hold onto our pillowcases of candy the whole way home. My friend started started crying after we got back. We locked all the doors and windows obviously. We were pretty sure he wasn't around when we went into my house so it seemed safe. That guy's house was right in front of the middle school I went to and I had to walk right by his house to get to school every day. So fearing for my safety, I told my dad. We went back to that house the next day to knock on the door. In hindsight, we probably should have called the cops and let them handle it, but my dad is a confrontational no BS type of guy. So we went over and knocked on the door. This time there were three cars in front of the house. This mother opens the door and we could see inside their kids watching TV. When we told her what happened, her face went pale and she immediately rounded up her family and got them outside, fearing this crazy person might still be in her house. She told us that her family went out to another friend's house in the city next to ours for Halloween that night to do all their trick-or-treating. They didn't get home until the next morning because they stayed the night there. It was at that point that cops were called to search the house while we all stood outside. They didn't find anything though, no trace of him turned up. He must have been long gone by then. It turned out that the guy was able to get into their house because there was a window unlocked in the daughter's room on the bottom floor near the front door. Luckily, nobody was in the house that night. The only notable thing the woman could tell the police was that she noticed a car with dark windows parked down the street for a while but didn't think anything of it. He must have been posted up in there with his dog scoping out houses and noticed this whole family get in a car and leave and figured that would be a good opportunity to make his move. So who was this guy? Nothing was stolen from the house, and nothing looked ransacked or the family obviously would have noticed. The family said the front door was still locked when they got back too, so he must have locked it again and went out through that same window to cover his tracks. I'm pretty sure this was before those ring doorbell cameras were popular, and I don't think they had any security cameras set up either. I'm not sure to be honest, maybe he was just a drug addict and didn't have a reason for any of it. His eyes did seem pretty crazy and wide open, like he was strung out on something. 
This happened to me a few years back. I was living on my own in the city and was unemployed at the time, usually out looking for work and trying to stay busy. One early afternoon, I was heading back to my neighborhood after running some errands downtown and boarded a tram that would take me almost all the way home. There was a park that I would have to cross between the stop and my home, but crossing it would only take a few minutes. So I boarded the tram, which was mostly empty. Besides me, there was one younger man in the second carriage and the driver up front in the first. I find an empty two seater the rows are quite narrow but i'm comfortable i put my earbuds in and look out the window as we start moving out of downtown and towards home we pass a couple of stops and don't pick up any new passengers there had probably been a tram right in front of us who took all the people so it was particularly empty compared to normal at the third stop the doors behind me open but i don't pay much attention until a stocky man average height probably in his 50s with neat short hair and inconspicuous clothes suddenly sits down on the next seat next to me the rows are very narrow this guy is basically trapping me. I can't get past him without his cooperation. He greets me with a huge smile and says hi as he sits down. On this particular day, being down about not finding work and it being broad daylight, I decide I do not want to play along. I just want to listen to my music and I don't like this man's vibe. I tell him I'm not in the mood to talk and he needs to go sit somewhere else. Wrong answer. That man goes from 0 to 100 in 0 0.2 seconds and his face contorts with rage as he starts yelling at me from the top of his lungs. I wish there was an exaggeration duration, but unfortunately it isn't. He was loud. You are a terrible person. You don't clean yourself. You stink of sweat. I didn't. He did. He goes on and on about what an abomination of a person I am, and I have sort of a freeze reaction. Inside, I am getting very scared. I start looking for a way out, but I'm trapped. I look over to the young man, hoping he will come to my rescue. I can tell he is hoping to stay out of it, but after I've been screamed at for maybe two whole minutes, he finally says meekly, you better calm down, which of course doesn't help. So he just gives up and goes back to whatever he was doing, probably looking at his phone. I am hoping that the driver might react as he has a clear view to the back of the tram and there's no way he's not hearing what's going on, but again, nothing. The stocky man, maybe frustrated that I'm not reacting to his insults, escalates the abuse and starts screaming that he's going to kill me. At this point, I have to do something and unconsciously probably decide that the only way is through. I'm so done with the situation, so before I even realize what I'm doing, I just get up and push past him. It's all survival instinct. Scared that he's going to follow me, I move quickly towards the front of the tram. He gets up and follows me, all red-faced, shouting how he knows where I live and that I need to clean myself behind my ears, that I stink and that he's going to kill me. Again, the driver does nothing. As we pull up to the next stop, which is the stop before mine, I wait until the very last minute before I ask the driver to let me out the front door, which he does. I slip out quickly in hope of escaping without being followed. I don't dare taking the time to look over my shoulder. I just hurry down the steps and away from the stop. I am so scared. Only when the tram has left the station do I take a second to look around me and he's not there. A brief sense of relief washes over me before I start worrying that he's going to get off at the next stop, which is normally my stop, and that he will be waiting for me there. It should have come as no surprise that I do not want this guy to follow me through the park or know where I live, so I spend a good hour just walking around, trying to get my nervous system out of panic mode and staying close to shops where there are other people around before I finally make my own way home. This happened when I was 21 years old, and I am fully aware I made a lot of poor decisions in my younger days. I am very lucky to have survived, and here's one of my stories. I have just met with a cousin at the mall I hadn't seen in a long time. At this point, I had been living in South America for about a year and had started feeling overly confident. I have been told many times about the dangers of taking a taxi from the street. Some people always take them and some people never do. It's obviously never worth the risk, but I look obviously foreign and I should have known better. My cousin says, I I always take street taxis, I'll find us a good cheap one. This was my first time ever taking a street taxi. She finds one and waves me over, looking back, I am flabbergasted as to how I got into an all black car. Again, these cars could just be normal taxis, they exist, but it's even more riskier than taking the yellow ones. The first red flag was how silent he is. After chatting away for some time, we realized it was taking far too long. I could see the smile in my cousin's eyes fade as we both realized at the same time that we are nowhere near home. She asks him, where are we going? and he mumbles under his breath, not really saying anything. We both know at the same time that something is very wrong. I remember vaguely thinking we had just went into a circle and wondering why he'd waited so long to rob us. It had to have been over 30 minutes. He finally gets off a highway and stops the car just past the ramp and we are on a very quiet street. He opens his dashboard and pulls out a gun. I'm terrified to say the least, in that moment all you think about is surviving. A car drives by and he yells, don't turn your head. He then tells us to give him everything we have. I take off my backpack and even my 
my jacket out of panic. He orders us to hand over our phones, which we oblige. He then says, I will let you go, but if you turn around to look at my license plate, I will come and kill you. He lets us out of the car and we run for it, but we are in a very, very bad area. I'm dressed inappropriately for the area, especially after handing over my jacket. A foreigner wouldn't dare come here. Everyone on the streets was staring at me up and down and one man yells, aren't you going to get cold? I try to cover myself with my hands as I felt so unsafe. We ask a couple of people to try and contact for help, but what do you know, they have no more minutes on their phone. In South America, it can be very dangerous and very poor. We find no police, but we do find security patrol people. They take us back to their office to contact the police, only for them to tell us we have no data and the phones are broken. So my cousin and I keep walking. It's the middle of the night and we are again in some obscure area. An hour must have passed by now. Then we see a police car and we are running for it. We tell them we had just been robbed and they ask, did you get a license plate number? I reply, no. The police officer shrug and say, he's probably at the club now celebrating all the money he made and proceeded to laugh. I then ask to use their phone to have someone come pick us up to which he says, hurry up, I don't have much data. We get home, but I find out that the person who robbed us used my cousin's phone to contact her family. Luckily, she was already with her parents at the time when they called, but there was a woman in the background crying hysterically, faking to be my cousin and they were trying to get a ransom from her parents. He was never found and nothing was done. I wonder what would have happened if it had just been one of us, and I am grateful that nothing more sinister happened. A week later, my friend and I are ordering a taxi, the safe way of course. While we are waiting, a similar black car pulls up next to us, asking if we need a taxi. We immediately say no. As he drives off, I turn to look at his car, and what do you know, he has no license plate in broad daylight. I'm not insinuating it was the same person. Of course it wasn't, there are over 10 million people in the city. My point is that it happens a lot in South America and never to get too comfortable. This experience made me realize what it's really like to live in a developing country, even if you have money and stay in good areas. You always need to be high alert and no one is immune to the constant fear of will I be robbed today? Alright, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Let me know what you thought of these stories in the comments below. But as always, have a nice day.